Welcome to Sankar Tollbooth Museum. Housed in the town's 18th century Tollbooth, our collection tells a story of Upper Nithsdale from prehistory to the present day, from the earth beneath our feet to the poet who sang of life in the valley. But before we go inside, the museum begins outside, just to the right of the main stairs. This was a jail, one of two in the building. This one was the more secure jail. The other, below the clock tower, was so insecure that prisoners could climb out at night by a skylight, sometimes needing the jailer to let them back in the next morning. Henry Wright, who you can see here, was a serial offender, needing a more secure place to be locked up. Outside of the doors are the jogs, which prisoners were locked to with an iron collar, sometimes being pelted by the public with rotten eggs. They were last used in the 1820s with the housebreaker being forced to stand there for three consecutive days. To reach the museum, we climb 15 stone steps and enter through the sturdy wooden door. Originally, there were no railings on these steps. The toll booth took four years to construct. Some say it was made out of stone of the old Sankar Castle, a story which may partly be true. In here, the borough officer would keep the weights and measures and collect the tolls. But before this, before there was a settlement at Sankar and a toll booth and even a museum, the landscape would have been more like the Arctic. As the ice age receded, there would have been reindeer and wild oxen roaming in the valley. It is from this period, 10,000 years ago, that we have our first evidence of settlers. They would have been hunters, here to live amongst the animals whose existence they relied upon. It is in the presence of shaped flint, a sharp-edged rock, an excellent cutting tool, fire starter and weapon, that we know of the existence of these people who left no other evidence. As the climate naturally changed, Nisdale became a woodland, trees growing in the new warmth. The first farmers in the region used stone tools to clear the trees one by one from the land to create areas for farming. 4,000 years ago, people discovered how to extract, work and blend metals. Using copper, then bronze and later iron, they cast more elaborate tools that let them live more complex lives. Hill forts could be defended from raiders armed with rapiers, spears and axes. Aggression made its mark on early Sankar, as it would continue to do so in the 17th century. In Sankar, the 17th century was known as the Killing Times. Covenanters were Christians who rebelled against attempts of King Charles II and James VII to restructure the church. Richard Cameron, a renowned preacher, made a public declaration in Sankar to defy this. The government reacted with fury, persecuting ministers and congregations. To escape, they held secret services outside, though they were sometimes caught and killed. Graves of the martyrs can be found scattered in the surrounding hillsides. Even after the persecution ended, with William II replacing James VII, the Covenanters still went to worship with weapons at their sides and sentries at their services. But there was more to life in the valley. In 1845, Alexander Anderson was born in nearby Kirkon. He was the sixth child of a quarryman and in his teenage years was employed as a surfaceman on the Dumfries to Glasgow railway line, laying and maintaining the railway tracks. But his real life passion in life was writing poetry, publishing his first collection in 1873. This allowed him access to the Scottish literary community and the humble surfaceman became the chief librarian at the University of Edinburgh and a popular figure in the artistic community of the capital. He is best known for his poem, Cuddle Doon, a warm and witty lament about children who just won't go to sleep. The mischief in that tam for tricks, he'd bother half the tune. But I, I hap them up and cry, O oh, Bernie's Cuddle Doon.
In Upper Nestdale, there is treasure beneath your feet. The soil here is clay, good for making sank or pavement tiles which are strong and hard wearing. Their distinctive dark blue colour comes from the iron oxide in the soil. As well as clay, there is coal. The history of coal mining here extends as far back as the Romans, who used it for smelting lead at nearby forts. Yet, for a long time, coal mining here was a minor industry. At the start of the 19th century, there were only 40 people employed this way in Sankar and 16 in Kirkconnell. The creation of the railway line between Dumfries and Glasgow increased coal production, as it was not only needed to power the steam trains that shuttled up and down the line, but it made transportation of the coal easier too. In the century of the Industrial Revolution, when coal powered the country, this was exceptionally important, and by 1925, the mine employed 2,000 people. As quick as the rise of coal mining happened, the fall was to come even quicker. By the end of the Second World War, only Kirkconnell had an active mine left, and by 1968, the last coal mine in Upper Nisdale closed. Knitting is a traditional craft which blends creativity and practicality. Sanker knitting is distinctive, world famous for its deft and technically demanding patterns with which people would knit gloves, hats and stockings to help them stay warm in the cold Nisdale winters. The town's distinctive knitting history dates back to the mid-18th century, with patterns passed down through generations by word of mouth rather than being formally written down. Knitting was often important for women, enabling them to support themselves and their families. As an industry, it brought in money to the area and was often safer than relying on unpredictable harvests. Opposite the toll booth is all the Arts, Community Arts Centre which is reviving the traditional Sankar knitting patterns by using technology like knitting machines and design software. It has been central to a resurgence of interest in the craft. Further down the high street, you can post a letter from the oldest still operating post office in the world, which has been open here in Sankar since 1712. There are more attractions to visit in Sankar and its surroundings, where visitors to the southwest of Scotland can experience the beautiful scenery of the Nith Valley and contemplate its rich history.